Welcome everybody. It's a cold, brisk day. It is the 23rd of December. Normally, in a good snow year, you can't get up here. Brought up the truck. And today, we are at the Birch Creek uh, Charcoal Kennels. So, yeah. You had just this little um, information board. Obviously, it doesn't get that well taken care of, but you know how government runs things. So at one time, uh, there were 16 charcoal kennels that were up and down this little draw. And I'll go over here, and you can see that the, there's four left right now. We'll go down on a guided tour here in a minute. But, you know, <clears throat> Over the hill, you have Gilmore on top, the old ghost town. And there used to be another ghost town, a uh, mining town up here. And across the valley was the Nicolia um, silver mine mining town over there. Yeah, so Viola Mine, Skull Canyon, got Gilmore. Oh, the, uh, the mining town that's up over here was called Han and yeah so they, they need to come in here and fix this but you know, they used to not have very nice parking area they didn't have decent little picnic tables the creek isn't very big it just comes up and peters out just down maybe a quarter of a mile if that so yeah made across the whole valley the only time I had to put four-wheel drive in is when I just got stuck right here. <laughs> so I put the four-wheel drive in just to make it that far. And that far is that, like 30, 40 feet. So, yeah. It's my birthday. And decided to drag my daughter off and let's to go do something different. You usually have to work. And I was like, you know... Let's go see if we can make it up the charcoal kennels because snow level is down so far this year. And there was like, the snow didn't even start getting deep until pretty much came around the corner there. So that tells you how bad it is. Uh, so as you come into this, uh, the charcoal kennels, it says, please don't take any of the bricks as souvenirs. Somebody decided to make a hole right there nice uh, on our self-guided tour see it's warm enough right now that it is actually melting off this little placard there we go uh, there you can see if we see that can we see that okay so yeah um, it says uh, 16 charcoal kennels were built here in 1866 by a person out of Butte, Montana. The kennels produce charcoal for the Nicolia uh, mine, which is across the valley, right over there, for two years. Um, the smelter closed in 1888. Uh, many of the kennels were left loaded with wood. 40 acres of cordwood was left stacked in rows nearby. So up above, they had uh, 40 acres of cordwood still stacked up above which is a lot of wood but then again at the time you know they probably didn't think it was going to stop right then and there and they probably thought uh these were going to go on for longer but you know mines the mining towns they run out they run out of minerals to to get my daughter i don't know if you see her she's like way down there by some of the other charcoal kennels that are left and i'm just i'm just wearing regular shoes right now i mean i didn't even wear no snow boots or nothing i did wear an extra set of uh, undergarments it is cold and here's another little kiosk that says uh to preserve and protect because a lot of these uh, charcoal kennels over the years, you know, people came and knocked them down and used the bricks, right? Because if you can see, there's just a brick hanging out right there. You just knock it down and go use it to build it on your own ranch or whatnot. 
go inside here you can just see the soot from uh, all the years of charcoal making you even got an old gooseberry bush in there that's died it's a beautiful area um, right now we're probably about what 70 miles 70 miles 70 miles from Idaho Falls and that or more to salmon Idaho so we're halfway give or take in between both hoping this is recording okay I'm trying to block from the wind but yeah so you know we, there would have been 16 charcoal kennels all down through here but you know people came in and taking them because free resource right the company doesn't want them they left all the the wood stacked up there because they were going to make more charcoal and uh you know once it's not profitable pick up your stakes and leave they said you know there was a town site the town site was around here also i think they said like 500 people so who knows how far down the original tree line was but if you look it's kind of hard to see but there's like a line and then a lower line where they had cut and the new growth has came down so you'd have to come here in person to see the progress of nature taking back what it can take back and here's a poor old gooseberry bush right there and then you got some lower shrub I don't know what kind of shrub that is I'm not one of those persons that's into uh bit bitonical is it bitonical I don't know how you say that that kind of science but yeah when you come down here if you ever make it the road the trail is graveled daughter down there freezing her butt off give me all kinds of crap that I drug her out here in the middle of nowhere on my birthday. Oh, that placard's gone. But yeah, they have the little gates to try to keep you out, but you know, people push and try to get in there. But you can see, see the bricks have all fallen down. And they've uh, tried to put uh, some, some cordage around the charcoal kennels to keep those that are still semi-intact up huh well you're supposed to be wearing your gloves dingo berry and you're supposed to oh you take off your glove and then you can record yeah so we got some little one of some of these little heat packs so she can't complain too much. She's the one that didn't wear gloves. Yeah. What? Oh yeah, like he, Laura says, my daughter. They, uh, they, uh, this is brand new. The rail railing, so you don't fall off. I guess they were worried about you falling a foot. All right, and then this is another little kiosk here. Said so these uh, kennels were 20 feet high and 20 feet in diameter. They were plastered inside. The plaster was a foot thick on the inside. Uh, say they said like none of the original four kennels that were left here are um, in their original condition. People came in here and, and restored them as best they could. Uh, they said there was also a lot of open pit kennels in this area, and uh, where they you know would fill them with dirt. I mean they would fill them with wood and then they would throw dirt over them. And after a while, they would be recovered. And if they didn't do it right, if you put 40 or 50 cores worth of wood and you didn't do it right, <laughs> you'd lose it all because it'd just all burn up. So this is one that they actually were able to restore. And you can see they'd fill it all the way up to there and then light the fire up there and it'd burn they us up there. way down. Yeah, they can. They can see. They can see a hole. You can see the hole. Hopefully you can see the hole. My daughter can't see the hole. She needs to wear glasses. Yeah. And then there's another little kiosk that they got on your guided little self-guided tour here. 
And then it says the charcoal can, it can be seen on the inside. I saw the black on the inside. Said when the burning was done, the check, uh, kennels were opened and the fire put out with water. And then the charcoal is moved through these lower doors, like where my daughter's at. And I said about 800 cords of wood became charcoal in a week. And a half long process. So in a week and a half, sorry. You know, can only read so much. Because I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm just the guy. Another charcoal kennel. So they fill it all the way up, lay it on fire, and then when they're done, open this door back up down here, and pull out all the charcoal. And then they send it across the valley, which is like, I don't know, it takes about, it took, it took them about a day, they said. It took them about a day to go across the valley with their horse-drawn stuff. And sometimes when they were going across, some of the charcoal would catch on fire in the wagons themselves and burn up. So you lose a wagon and all that charcoal you just made. That's my daughter back there. I don't know what she's doing. But I love her. But I don't know what she's doing. And it's a pretty little valley. I mean, it's just a pretty little draw. Just You're like literally in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> don't have a drone, so you can't see the overview. One day maybe I'll buy a drone. My daughter said that she wanted to come down this way. That's the only person that's been through here. For a minute. Yeah, I'm breathing a little heavy. Is that a shape? We're going up a hill. But yeah. Good little view of the back door. What you see in there? I said, uh, yeah. Oh, they also had a uh, little wooden ramps I guess that led up to the door and then when the charcoal kennel was all full they pulled the ramps off you know because of the heat and the little, this little kiosk here Brr. it's a little chilly so glad I bought these little hand warmers well I didn't buy them I got them so off we go couple more up here at one time I think during the summer oh, it's been a couple years ago I came up here and all this is some old bricks up here but at one time uh, when I came up here there was a couple old sacks left of the wood that was all stacked ready to be burned that people didn't utilize. <sighs> and then, uh, there you go. A little another little shot of, um, and the Collier Ranch was which is straight across. I guess 1,000 people used to live across the valley. But the mine itself was all the way up in the top of where the clouds are now. So it was all the way up in the top of the saddle of the mountain where the mine was. But like, like I was saying here, it said, as you look across the valley, try to imagine what it must have been like hauling the charcoal by wagon from the kennels, traveling as fast as possible to the smelter and uh, if the charcoal was not allowed to cool long enough, it would burst into flame. So, and there goes your whole trip. So they take the, we're taking the charcoal from here, go across the valley and to the smelter that was at the bottom of there so that they could uh, melt the ore 
Um, over here on Gilmore uh, Summit, the town of Gilmore, um, it's like 7,000 feet or something. Um, the railroad came in from uh, Butte, Montana, up and over the pass, and that was the most direct line. But the railroad stopped at the town of Gilmore and then went back. Now this one here, it just uh, says uh, how the brick was made and the kennels were made from very light clay and lime which they said probably came from deposits in Jump Creek. I'm not really sure where Jump Creek is. It's probably just a teeny little creek like this that starts up from snow melt and then just perkles up and goes because it's the rocky poor soil so most of these little springs never make it across the valley into a creek. Um, wages here were, what they say, a dollar fifty to two dollars a day. And the kennels cost, they say they figure, several thousand dollars each to make. Uh, yeah, so yeah, that's pretty cool. So you made pretty good money, two dollars a day back then. That's, that must have been good enough money. Drag you out here in the middle of nowhere, they had to pay you good, right? Because now a lot of people are going to save up and say, let's go to the middle of nowhere in Idaho and uh, go work some charcoal kennels. Yeah. It's a pretty cool little shot of the parking area. This is a beautiful area. My daughter, while we're coming across here, She's getting a little excited when the back end of the truck slipped a little bit. I'm like, oh, you're good. The snow's really not deep and it's powder. <laughs> if I'd went around that way, instead of coming up a little steeper embankment, I wouldn't even have to put the four-wheel drive in. But I was silly. I'm like, I'm going to take the short distance. And yeah, nope. Another one. Oh. Oh good, it's just enough, just enough. That one, just enough. Ouch. Ow, 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 ow. Okay, it's a little sharp still. Okay, so I was wrong on the population map. So some of these, so this is where the old stacks of wood would have been. And well, you can't really see on this one. Uh, so this is where the old wood was stacked up to go in the charcoal kennels that they left. But this one up here will show you just how it was just like just all axe marks as they were cut down into lengths that could fit into the charcoal kennels. It's kind of you know, it's hard to imagine now but I guess not too hard if you have a good imagination 16 of these going up yeah I don't mind it's not I try not to I'm just trying to breathe so uh, the town that sat behind here they said had about 150 people there's a few hundred yards behind the charcoal kennels up here on this flatter little bench area. Uh, main workers were here were Chinese, ugh, Chinese, Irish, and Italian. And then they said the like it says the little placard there that uh, in Italy charcoal was used for everything, heating homes, whatever. So those immigrants were highly sought after to run these charcoal kennels. And it will, it would be a good investment, yeah. Like I said, spring pretty much just comes up right there too, doesn't it? So yeah, it just goes right down here a little bit. But uh, yeah, it's a 
beautiful up here. There's my daughter down there, if you can see her. I don't have the automatic zoom or stuff on this camera. I'm not invested in thousands of dollars to be a YouTuber. I'm just here to share experience. I haven't uploaded anything different other than my cat videos for a little bit. I love my cats, but I do like to try to do different stuff too. We're gonna go try to go fishing on my birthday here. But <laughs> the wind's a little brutal down in the valley. And even with these little heat packet things in my gloves, I'm losing the, the, the thrill of going to uh, go fishing here. <laughs> <laughs> all right well there goes my daughter her nose is all red your nose is all red i love you <laughs> yeah so all right well thanks everybody idaho charcoal kennels up here birch creek valley area between yellow mine and gilmore summit thanks for tuning in